then then I was I was just studying. Sorry. What's up YouTube? It's your boy Chad, aka Atlas DMD student. Please don't forget the student and guess what? We are back. Back again with some more free game for you. And today we are gonna be talking about, we're gonna get that white coat. All right, the first year to medical school keys. The things that you need to know to excel in your first year of medical school, you know, it seems like it was just yesterday for you, boy. But we glowed up. So I got some valuable things that I want you all to know. I wish I would have known them all when I started medical school. Um, but I learned them along the way, and so we're not gonna waste no time. I don't like wasting no time. Um, but please, 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 please help your boy out. Like, we try to make this channel grow. We need to get everybody on this Atlas DMD student train. So please tell your friend, tell a friend, and tell a friend. But otherwise, please comment, like, subscribe, do all of that. We need to make sure that this thing grows. Help me, help you, help a brother out. Please, okay, please. When you come to medical school, all right, I need for you to understand your study persona. Study persona, however you wanna say, persona, persona, tomato, tomato, whatever it is, learn who you are as a studier. Reason why is because obviously we know medical school, you're gonna be doing a lot of studying, okay? There's other things that we'll get to, but you're gonna be doing a lot of it. So when it comes time to saying, you know, what am I gonna do in medical school to be the most successful student I can be? You gotta first realize who you are as a student. Do you prefer studying in the night? Do you prefer studying in the morning? Do you, uh, you know, prefer to study in your bedroom, in your living room? And I'm not asking you which one you're most comfortable with, right? Because some people like to study in their bed before you know y'all be knocked, all right? That's not what I'm asking you to do. What I'm asking you to say is where are you most productive? Where do you get the most work done? When do you get the most work done? Because that's what's gonna make you the most efficient, studier as a medical student. It's gonna make you the most efficient person, but the most efficient medical school student and studier. All right, and that's what we are all about in medical school, efficiency. We ain't got time to be sitting here studying for 15 hours a day. That's horrible. Efficiency, okay? What kind of learner are you? Are you a visual learner? Meaning like you watch lectures or you have to watch videos on YouTube or watch you, you you learn like this, like you learn through watching me. You love watching Atlas DM play. You love watching videos to understand things. Like that's a visual learner. The next will be a kinesthetic learner. You have to get up, move, act things out. You know, something like that that helps you learn. You have to get your hands on it. You know, you know, you learn in anatomy lab. You know, you might be watching a TV or watching something, but as soon as you put your hands on it, you got it. Okay. Or you can be an auditory learner. These are people who watch podcasts or you can listen to a lecture and you just pick it up like that. The reason why you need to know these things is because there's no need for you to be trying to watch a YouTube video or just watch a lecture when you're a kinesthetic learner. You're not going to learn it. Stop beating your head up against that wall. It makes no sense. Okay? So cater to what you learn best. If you're an unfortunate person like me and it's an even split, okay, there's, like, there's a test that my... I'm gonna drop a link for it when I find it, but there's like a test that can tell you what kind of learner you are on like a scale. I took it, I was even across all of them. And don't worry, here's my tip to you if that's you. Um, you unfortunately have to trial and error your way through because some things may work for this, some things may work for that, but some things you work, you learn best in different areas. So one thing you may learn kinesthetically, another thing you may learn uh, visually, another thing you may learn, auditory. So, sorry, we got the best of all three words. Sorry about that. We're gonna move on to number two, okay? So, next thing on the list is developing a personal, personal routine and schedule. And the reason why I call this a personal routine and schedule is because not every person is highly, uh, disciplined and sketch to where they have to schedule out every single piece of their day. Me, I'm more scheduled disciplined than not. Because I grew up playing sports, I played college football, like we was on 
text message thread, be here this time, be here that time, be here that time. So everything was always on schedule. I've gotten used to it, so that's just how I best function. I can't say that I love it all the time, but I realize like if I'm gonna get stuff done, this is how I gotta live life. Again, learning to be the best you and not always the most comfortable you. Be comfortable being uncomfortable. Quote that. Your personal routine daily schedule. So for instance, um, let's first knock out like class versus no class. At certain institutions, um, they will give you the option as to whether to attend class in person or not. Um, we were given the option. Obviously, you could go to class and sit through the lecture or you could watch all your lectures online. I would encourage you to at least try out going to class if offered. Try out going to class in person first because you need to know if, you, if you've never had this option in college, then you need to know, get that feel for which one you like. Try going to class and then try, you know, a day of not going to class and see how it works, right? Just so you can figure out which one's better. Um, pros and cons to this. The pros of going to class is you're there in person. It's a set time that you have to be there. So you know you gotta get up out your bed, stop being lazy. Um, you will be right there in front of a professor, so it's a lot easier to ask questions as you see them. So, you know, you're right there. You can, you know, professor, I have a question. Like, that can be you. You can do that. I mean, you, you'll get to see your classmates. That's another thing that we underestimate sometimes, which is a social learning environment. You're around other classmates that you can, can, can relate to. So, pros. The cons are um, your schedule is set. Meaning like you're on campus, you're on campus for those four or five hours, however long lecture is. You know, it greatly limits if you live away how much you can do otherwise because you have to spend that amount of time. For me, a con was um, I have a habit of zoning out once I either don't understand it or I already understand it and you're still going. So a professor may be talking about something that I've already learned and I zone out and it's hard to get me back, you know, when I have to sit through that for that 45 minutes. Also, on the flip side, is if you're talking about something I don't understand, ooh, over my head, yeah, knocked, okay? So, understanding that about yourself, which is why, for me, I ultimately decided to not go to class. And the reason why I chose to study from home, do all my lectures at home, was because I could create my own personal schedule. I got my workout in, got my food in, I was able to study how I wanted, you know, take care of life events as needed. I wasn't on that schedule that you're kind of relegated to when you're an undergrad and um, when you're in high school at times. So that was pros and cons for going to class. That decision is up to you. Um, experience both before you just up and make the decision um, because you want to be, you want to make an informed decision. Everybody take out your pens and pads and I'm about to take y'all to school, all right? Here's how you study. I mean, this will cover you through like, First year, second year, third year, fourth year. If you're an undergrad, try this out. If you're in high school, like everybody who needs to understand information, just try this. It's tried and true. A lot of people call it a lot of different terms, but it's just the basic fundamentals of studying, um, especially long term. If you're studying for the MCAT, like please implement this in three phases, right? The first strategy, learn. In this part, this is where it comes down to your lectures, your YouTube videos, your in-class lectures, your um, outside resources, which I'm gonna touch on in a minute, but everything to where you're just acquiring information for the first time. You're reading books, you're watching videos, you're doing all these things to just get a basic concept of what is going on. Do not stress yourself the first time you read information about, I gotta get every little detail, it's gonna come, I promise you. But this is where you're getting that basic fundamental foundation of how to learn. It's through watching those videos and everything, like get the concept down. Then once you have that, you're going to the second phase. The second phase is the apply phase. This is strictly question banks and practice tests, right? For medical school, it's a lot of question banks. Um, there's plenty of things that are out there, third party resources that prepare you for the step one exam. And yet, those question banks that prepare you for the step one exam are great. There's questions in the back of your textbooks that you use. Um, but any of these questions that can help you to apply the information you just got, right? So you just went through the learn phase, you got a great foundation, you feel like you can understand something. These questions will help you twofold. One, they will help you to identify what you already know very, very well. Two, they will help you to identify the weak areas that you didn't pay attention to the first time that you read. 
we have to get out of this mindset that when we read something and then we answer questions on it, that if we don't know it, then we're some type of failure that we don't know what we just read. You're not gonna gain everything the first time, okay? So these questions are meant to identify your weaknesses. It's meant to guide your studying later on. This way, once you've done your questions, you can then go back and go back into your learn phase to regain what you're missing. So these things are interchangeable. Go to the, go to the learn phase, go to the practice phase, go to the learn phase, go to the practice phase, right? And then we have the third phase, which is your retain phase. And this is ongoing, ongoing, right? Your retain phase says that I have gained certain, certain details and I need to keep them in my mind the entire time. Okay, so that means using flashcards. In medical school, we use a flashcard um, software known as Anki, which is just known as spaced repetition. And I'll explain that in a minute when we get to outside resources. But for right now, any flashcard case to do it. If you wanna write them down, great. If you wanna use Quizlet, great. If you wanna use Anki, great. I don't care what you use, but you need something that's gonna be a reminder to you, a quick reminder of small details and big concepts that you need to grasp. And that's gonna help you retain this information as you move through school. Schooling, I hate to tell you guys this, when you signed up for medical school, you signed up for no more breaks. Ain't no more of them breaks from studying. Like if you really wanna do well, you're constantly trying to build on new concepts. So constantly trying to you know, retain information to help you build later. That's why we have these flashcards. That's why you have these three phases. Learn, apply, retain, okay? Learn, books, videos, whatever you need to do to gain a foundation. Apply, questions, practice tests, whatever you need to do to make sure that you can not only know the concepts, but you can recognize them. It's one thing to see things and be like, oh, I have that. It's another to recognize it when it's written down. Retain phase, flashcards, space repetition to make sure you are nailing down, nailing down those concepts that you just absolutely can't forget. The key with this is things that you're getting wrong in your apply phase is what you need to be making these cards on. And you'll constantly see them. You'll never forget it because you'll always remember that wrong answer and you'll remember that card you made on it, all right? Boom, how to study declassified by your boy, Alice MD. That you're gonna get a lot of advice, you're gonna get a lot of people saying, this is what you have to do to be successful. If you're not on this, if you're not on that, like, man, cut that out. Listen, my advice to you is finding out what works for you, okay? Everything that I've ever told you on this channel is always about what works for you. Going back to my first video or second video, I said, what worked for me when I was working for you, what works for you may not work for me. But the premise of it is try it out, give it a try. And this is, so I'm just gonna give you a brief overview. I will tell you in a later video how I personally study, but I'm gonna give you a brief overview of the things that will be mentioned to you and so that you know what they are. So the first thing you'll come across, people will always tell you about this is first aid. And really what it is, is it covers all of the systems that will prepare you for step one. People will use it as a primary source, meaning that they will basically annotate their notes that they get from their universities as lecture notes. So it's basically having your notes that you have for your classes as you're going through first year and then using first aid to annotate, it, annotate that. So first aid is great for, like I said, lots of memory hooks, lots of conceptual information to help you um, better consolidate the mass amount of information. I would recommend it, especially in the first two years, um, if not as a primary resource, but more so as something that you at least reference when you can't understand something. Um, it's very concise given the large amount of, large amount of information that you have. Um, and it's, it's essentially the go-to, right? It's, the, it's one of the first things most students go ahead and buy when they start school. So first aid, would recommend. Uh, so sketchy, otherwise known as sketchy medical, <laughs> it saves a lot of us medical students from having to memorize these drugs and, and bugs and bugs is microbiology. Sketchy is a video source and it's broken up into different categories. There's Sketchy Farm, Sketchy Micro, um, and Sketchy Path, right? And so, so Sketchy Farm is your pharmacology, Sketchy Micro is for your microbiology, and you know, so on and so forth. Um, and they use symbols with descriptions to help you to remember exactly what characteristics are of a certain drug or a certain bug, right? So if you're, you know, walking into, you know, a staph infection and they got, you know, the, pill the penicillin pen to help you remember that, like, you treat staph with a penicillin. So it's something very, 
you know, innate like that to help you with these memory hooks to help you understand. 11 out of 10 would recommend Sketchy. Please go ahead and get that Sketchy. I promise you it'll make learning your drugs and bugs so much easier as you go through medical school. So Boards and Beyond is great for learning like physiology, pathology, just from a lecture style. Um, it goes through um, all of the systems, all of the pathologies and the physiology behind it. He greatly explains it in great detail using pictures and diagrams to help you remember it. Um, it's kind of like having your own personal lecture that what you have in class. So he breaks it down really well. It's in an organized fashion, great PowerPoints to go along with it. Um, and pretty straightforward too. So Boards and Beyond is something that I feel like if you're looking for that extra step to understand something outside of class, go ahead and look at it. it he bases it off of first aid too. So it's a great resource for students to kind of like have a video aid to go with first aid. And I think on his website, he even like corresponds it with the first aid pictures. So kind of think of it as a video source to, call, to go along with first aid. The next thing, Pathoma. Pathoma is a lecture series. He also has a book to go along with it. But for me, uh, Pathoma was great for just understanding the actual details of pathology. Breaks it down so much better to where you're not just like memorizing diseases, uh, but you're actually able to understand the physiological and pathological processes with these diseases. It will greatly help you when it comes to preparing you for a step one exam, which actually will help you in your lecture series, um, regardless of what institution that you're at. So I would recommend talking about Anki. Anki is a space repetition software. Um, basically being able to take the flashcards that you've created or it has pre-made decks, which is greatly useful for medical students where you can just get, you know, a deck that goes through the, the most common section in first aid or a deck that runs you through all the sketches or a deck that goes through, um, what's the other? Oh, like Zonky is a deck that's just basically used for all the need to know things for first and second year for step one. So basically what happens is you have these, these cards and space repetition is based on the fact that when learning and retaining information, you see it the first day and then you see it a day later. Or after you see it that day later, then you see it three days later and then you see it five and then seven. And just kind of spacing it on out so that eventually you have such a long period of time between um, acquiring and retrieving that information, it makes your synapses a lot stronger in your brain to assist in your memories. And I wasn't on it very strongly in first and second year, but I'm on that thing hard now. Um, in third year. In first and second year, I used Quizlet. I made my own cards. It took a lot of time, but for me, I was able to feel like I had a lot more, I guess, autonomy in it. But when I learned how to use Anki a little bit better, it helped me um, be more efficient. So I would definitely endorse Anki over a Quizlet at this point in time. This is time to talk about having a social life, all right? Are yeah. you looking at me like that? You don't like my party? Medical school, we not all books and all that kind of stuff. Like we need, we, we gotta turn up sometimes, we gotta have some fun. So, social life. Don't let anybody tell you that all we do is study or all you will do is study in medical school. Now you will study a lot, I'm not gonna lie to you about it. You, you, you doing some study, but you need to find time for yourself, for your friends, for your family. So, what my group of friends did, and like I said, we hold each other down to this day. Shout out to the Melanin Mafia. We knew after every block exam, you know, we was getting together. Like the class, we our class itself had, you know, class parties, being like as a group of friends, we set aside time to get together, you know, potluck style, going out, whatever we needed to do to say, oh, we made it through another block. Praise him. Okay. You know, no longer are you in college or on the job where you just got time that you're just spending with people all the time. A lot of your studying is going to be self-directed and, you know, orientation, especially this year with you guys coming in during a pandemic, there's not going to be as many gatherings and stuff like that. So it's going to be hard to maybe even gain friends. But part of going into medicine, part of becoming a professional is being able to put yourself out there for who you are and recognizing that people will either gravitate to you or they will not. And understanding that like, we have to be very purposeful in our relationships at this stage in our life. You know, we can't just sit around and eat dinner for three hours and hope or hope our conversation comes together or eat lunch for that long and hope it comes together. Like we gotta be about, you know, saying, hey, I'm this, I'm interested in this, this is what I love to do. Like, and that's how you create great lasting relationships. I think one thing that my group of friends had to learn when we got to medical school is, especially as underrepresented students, we gotta hold each other down. 
And when one of us struggles, like we need to be there to pick each other up. So as you're going through school and you really want to be able to gain lasting relationship with your friends, understand that medical school is a very vulnerable time period. It's a very, it's a time period that's unlike any other because in college, especially for students coming in, you may have had minor struggles, but this is the first time in your life that like things may be in doubt about how well you're doing and there's stress accompanying that, that you're just not used to. And understanding that you're gonna have to lean Lane, you have to lean on your friends. You know, you're gonna have to have somebody there to hold you, hold you up, hold you down, be there in your time of need, and be very, very purposeful about how you reach out to your friends. Schedule that time to be with them. Um, really, that's why I say like, I couldn't be more thankful for the group of friends I have and how we've grown because of medical school in itself and the nature of it. But like, we have fun together, we support each other one success is everybody's success you know we're not in competition with one another it, it's none of that when you get to medical school and you're starting your first year you get so caught up in the class the clinic responsibilities whatever it may be you start to you know bubble yourself off into what can feel like you know it's just you and in medical school and that's all that's going on in life and really that's not true you know you can get very cut off from your family and your friends because it feels like they're living in this outside world and you're just kind of stuck in this very intensive training and career forever. But uh, I encourage you to make sure that you're still talking to your friends, make sure you're still talking to your family, text them, call them. You know, I try to do right now in clinic, it's hard, in clinical years it's even harder. So I just try to every night pick somebody to get in contact with, to talk to, whether it's a text or something like that, just to like, one, let them know I'm still thinking of them, but then also, you know, let, give myself a chance to de decompress from you know just my bubble in medical school so um reach out to your family members find that motivation sometimes they can set you straight for just what you need to realize you're not in this life alone you need that to continue to be good in medical school you so so need it to keep your sanity you need people that are going to be about good things good energy support all of that so put yourself out there be honest about who you are. Search for people who you feel like have your best interests at heart and have fun. You know, it's, it's a great time period, you know, do take care of business and have fun. Medical school is not just about your books. You want to get involved. You want to volunteer. You want to jump into research. You want to get on some committees. And I think it's all great things. For me, becoming involved, I looked at medical school as a time period to do all the things that I couldn't do in, in, in undergrad and, and be that kind of a student. So I chose to get involved in a lot. You don't have to do that. My, my advice to you is to be involved in the things that you're very, very passionate about. First talk, research. If you're thinking about something quite competitive, the neurosurgery, the orthopedic surgery, the plastic surgery, dermatology, interventional radiology, like all these things that are very competitive because they have limited spots. Research is something that you want to get into. It's a great way to gain mentors, gain some connections, gain experience. It's something that you're going to have in your, you know, your resume profile later on. So getting involved in research is good. Most places will have, they will understand that medical students, you know, aren't quite ready to lead their own projects. If you can, great, you're amazing. But they're looking for medical students who are just willing to work in the time that they do have. So if you're a student like myself who doesn't have a great background in it, you know, tell people what you're capable of, what your fears are, and maybe they can set you up with something to help you grow in your experience. It's part of your networking process, part of your growth as a person, which is just being able to recognize where your limitations are and being honest with people about that. And when you're honest, that's how you get help. Don't be afraid to ask for help. I did, I told people up front, I wasn't doing research before medical school. So help me out. This is what I'm trying to get into and I always let them know my limitations. So research is not out of the picture if you feel like you haven't done it and want to get involved. Put yourself out there. Leadership. So luckily for me, my medical school looked out for us. They were like, we're not going to get you involved in any of that your first semester. We want you to be focused on doing well in class, which is a great suggestion. I always say for students, when you're first starting school, college, medical school, whatever, observe. See what it's like. Are you doing well? Can you manage this new load that's on you when you start school before you just start hopping into stuff and being involved? So prove yourself that first semester, do what you need to do. If there's one thing that you're just so passionate about and it's, you know, you have to apply in that first semester, do pick that one thing. You know what I mean? Like don't, don't hop in on five 
and you're not ready yet. Do pick your one thing if it's you know only available during that first semester and do that. And then as you kind of say, okay, I got it under my belt, sex semester is when things will start, you know, being available for you and you can get more involved and you're better at your studying efficiency, time management, all of that, like that's when you can start to build on. But at first just observe, get the lay of the land, get your study feet up under you, get your medical school, you know, floaties going, and then we'll build on top of that. But leadership is great. Get involved with committees, admissions committee, you know, a lot of schools allow students to be a part of the admissions process. There's evaluation, there's the student council, there's all these different things you can get involved with, interest groups, community outreach, um, so many different things, but do what you're passionate about. Because when it comes down to apply later, residencies, they just wanna know like, what is, how did you spend your time? Granted, did you show interest in your field, but also like, what did you do otherwise? And this is how you stand out and be unique, all right? Great thing about medical school is just like the volunteer life is great because people are so um, welcoming to students, especially medical students who are taking their time to be involved in communities, whether that's encouraging kids to be involved in math and science, whether that's encouraging them to go to um, medical school themselves, whether that's going out and doing, you know, blood pressure screenings, blood glucose screenings, like anything you can do to be a, a, a pillar in your community is great. Do it in your own way. There's, you know, trash pickups and all these different things you can do. Volunteering, please don't look at this as like a box to check off. It's more so like just being a, a servant. I mean, that's really what as a physician you're training to do, which is to be a public servant, to be of help to your communities and hopefully change our aspect of healthcare for everyone. So look into volunteering. I encourage you again, do what you're passionate about, do what you love, okay? Whew. So I know that was a lot of information, but First year is the best year, like a lot. But first year is a great year because it is all this excitement that's been building. Y'all got your white coats, you know what I mean? Like it's the best time period because just, you're so happy to have started medical school and I'm happy for y'all. Hopefully the keys I was able to provide will help you along the way. If I forgot something like, please like hit up these comments, like comment, if you made it this far, please comment what you got right now. Like, like, subscribe, um, send, you can hit me on IG, every, anything you need. Like, we're gonna have a video on that whole relationships piece. There's gonna be plenty of videos to explain a lot of this in depth. I just wanted to get this information out to y'all as you started your medical school journey. I know y'all gonna have the best of luck because you you know you listen to your boy Atlas DMD. Really, you guys are great. You're gonna do great in your first year. I wish y'all all the best. And until next time, it's your boy Chad, a.k.a. Atlas DMD student. Please don't forget the student and...